Good evening, my name is Nikki Paschel, and tonight we are doing a show called Meet the Candidates. I am filling in for Mr. Paul Herring. Tonight we have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Claudia Crone. How are you tonight, Miss Crone? I'm great. How are you about yourself? I'm great. I'm glad you made it out. I'm glad to be here. All right, so let's tell the citizens of Flint a little bit about yourself. Well, I am uh, the mother of five children of which two are deceased. My son, Greg, passed away in 1995 from an aneurysm at age 29. And uh, another son passed away in 2004 at age 36 from uh, diabetes complications. I've been a resident of Flint for 51 years, and 35 years of that time has been a homeowner in mm -hmm. the first ward. Oh, that's great. Sorry to hear about your sons. Mm -hmm. Um, is this your first time running for office? Public office, yes. Okay, and tell the citizens what ward you're running for. I'm running for first ward. I'm running to keep my position as first ward city council person. Okay, okay. And what geographical area is the first ward in? Well, the first ward would be from Clio Road to North Saginaw Street and from Carpenter Road to Pearson Road up to DuPont, south on DuPont, to Eldridge and from Eldridge back to Carpenter Road. Okay. Can you tell us to you what do you think or what does a city council person do? Uh, several things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have uh, limited uh, powers now with the emergency manager, you know, mm -hmm. being uh, in control, but uh, that allow us uh, a lot more time to connect with the community. I think it brings us closer to the community because uh, uh, we are out there more, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of emergency managers, how do you feel like Flint or why did Flint get in a position of having to bring in an emergency manager? Well, uh, I would suppose it, it, the main reason what would be that we were having problems with the budget. Mm -hmm. I know that the governor has sent down a budget elimination plan which uh, I don't think was followed. So I really do think the emergency manager may have came in to uh, avoid Flint going into bankruptcy, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay, speaking of money, do, do you think that had a lot to do with the $19 million deficit that Flint has now, or? Well, you know, uh, that's puzzling because when the emergency manager came in in 2011, we had a deficit of $11 million. 2012, we had a deficit of over 19 million. So with all the cuts in, in uh, staff and uh, city services, uh, I don't understand how that happened. Right, right, that's understandable. Um, let's go back to talk about your ward, the first ward. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of blight in your ward? Oh yes, yes. I think uh, the first ward is probably, in my opinion, the hardest hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on helping that out or getting out there and are you going to get like youth to help or? Well, I have uh, organized uh, several cleanups in the, in the first ward. Mm -hmm. We did three major cleanups in the first ward and uh, I'm really proud that uh, that has brought block clubs together, working together to clean up the first ward. We've also had uh, members from uh, different churches to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, the youth has also helped. And uh, uh, there are uh, people in the worst first ward that are actually given the youth jobs cutting wow. grass at, on, at our abandoned properties. Okay, okay. So. so speaking of the youth, can you let them know how important it is for them to get out there and vote? Well, uh, they are our future. They really are. Mm -hmm. And uh, voting changes things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a very good example of that is uh, the uh, problems that Michigan, especially Flint, has had, in my opinion, under a Republican governor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about you. Let the people little know a little bit more about you. What are some of your accomplishments? Well, like I said, I have uh, organized uh, several cleanups, successful cleanups in the first ward, and I'm very proud that I've been able to direct uh, some of the residents to 
uh, people at City Hall that could help them with their water bills, you know, make arrangements or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are people that have called that were in danger of losing their homes. Uh, there's a program called Step Forward that has been able to help them. Uh, and uh, people have also gotten help with their consumer power bills. That's great right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about any of our community centers? I am committed to keep in House of Brain, a senior activity center. Mm -hmm. We do not need a, 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 a senior uh, daycare in the first ward. We need to keep House of Brain as it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would really, really like to see a youth activity center. And since they are closing Bryant School, I think that would be a great location for a uh, youth activity center. Sort of like the Haskell. You know, mm -hmm. Officer Carpenter is doing a great job over there. We need that uh, over in our ward, too. Are you talking about Jesse Carpenter? Yes. Okay, yes. for Flint yes. Powell. My yes. son actually played basketball for yes. him. So, yeah, yes. that is a great program mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you plan on, speaking of officers, this brings the next question into play. Um, how do you plan on getting more public safety out there? Well, you know, if the emergency manager would keep his promise, when they uh, asked us to vote, on the public uh, safety millage, which I did not vote on. But it, their promise was that if the millage was passed, that we would get 10 new police officers. So far, we've only gotten three. Mm -hmm. A year later, mm -hmm. we've only gotten three officers. So they need to step up mm -hmm. and keep their promise and give us those other seven police officers yes. and more. <laughs> Yes. Um, so with the public safety, are the firefighters tied into that as well? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. Okay. But, you know, we uh, a few years ago, we really had uh, a lot of fires and stuff in Flint, but they seem to have died down some, but we need uh, police officers. We need police presence in the first ward. We need more detectives to investigate mm -hmm. crimes, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I have seen um, a lot of state police mm -hmm. riding around in Flint. They are not actually tied to the city because they're state. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think them coming in takes away from our city officers, or are they basically just brought in because we don't have enough city officers on well, duty? I, I, pardon me, but I think we need all the help that we can get because we have the Flint Police Department, the uh, County Sheriff Department, mm -hmm. the FBI, the state police, and, and crime is still out of hand. Mm -hmm. So we need you know as much help as we can get. Okay, so what do you need? What do you think the city of Flint needs? As far as what? Just in general, uh, well, overall. I, like I said, I think we need more public safety officers. Mm -hmm. I think we uh, need, they really, really do need the, to bring back the blight enforcement officers mm -hmm. because property owners should be held responsible, responsible for their properties. Yes. That would cut down a lot on the blight, you know, mm -hmm. because as it stands now, uh, they're just walking away, you know. So we need... Uh, my number one uh, uh, thing would be we need more public safety officers. We need jobs. Yes, we do. We need jobs. And I think that would get some of the youth off the streets. Yeah, it will. Mm -hmm. So let us know what do you think would quali what qualifies you over the other candidates running for the first ward? Well, uh, my uh, uh, many years of uh, public service. Uh -huh. uh, as I said before, I've been a, a resident of uh, Flint for 51 years. I grew up in the uh, civil rights movement in Birmingham, Alabama. So I've been an activist all my life. And uh, we uh, just need uh, people that love the city, mm -hmm. love the first war, has the energy and the desire to make things better in the first war. We were, Flint would never be the way it was but we don't have to live the way we're living now. That's true, that's true. I asked you a question before we came on camera. Mm -hmm. What made you want to run for city council? Well, you know, I was appointed on December 20th, 2012, and Krista Longley from the Journal asked me that night if I would run for, to be elected to this position, mm -hmm. and I told her, no, I'm not a politician. Well, uh, this was on a Monday night, that Wednesday, I just drove the ward, and it was devastating. I could not believe the devastation. You know, driving through neighborhoods where there was only uh, blocks, where there was only one property that was uh, 
occupied. Mm -hmm. You know, there are blocks and blocks on the north side in the first ward where they're, uh, they're just abandoned. Mm -hmm. You know, all the houses are abandoned. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, uh, like I said, I know that, uh, that we can do better than that. We may, we may not be able to stop the foreclosures, but we can't clean up the blight. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the area is, is, is not inhabited, it still doesn't have to look like the city dump. Right. I mm -hmm. think that would make a big difference. Mm -hmm. That would cut down on a lot of crime mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that's going on mm -hmm. in our city. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get back because you are running for city councilman mm -hmm. or city councilwoman. Mm -hmm. um, where are your campaign headquarters going to be located? I do not have a campaign headquarters, mm -hmm. but I do have a treasurer because I need somebody to help me with that. Uh, to each his own, but uh, I don't feel like I need a campaign manager because I'm out there every day talking to people. Right. They are telling me what you know, what they want, what they need, mm -hmm. and and most of the time I'm I'm telling them, uh, uh, don't ask me what I'm going to do. Tell me what you want me to do, because I'm here, you know, to serve you. Right, right. Yeah. So a lot of people think that people that's running for office have like large campaign funds mm -hmm. and money like that. Mm -hmm. So it's basically something that you're just doing independently. Yeah, and uh, like I didn't, when I mentioned residents that were paying teenagers to mow lawns, uh, I'm doing that too. So I mm -hmm. can't ha pay people to mow vacant properties and, and uh, have a campaign manager because sometimes they expect to be compensated a little bit. Of so course they do. I'm my own campaign manager. Okay, <laughs> that's understandable. So um, can you tell the citizens what new and fresh ideas you have? Uh, any new and fresh ideas that I have? Well, I think that it's going to take more than me it's going to take a collaborative effort with uh, the city leaders, you know, city activists, the clergy, elected officials. All of us have got to come together, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, map out a plan to uh, bring Flint, you know, to a better state than it's in now. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of makes sense that each ward, each ward, um, city councilmen need to work together, not just in their ward, but wards should come together yeah, be, and, yeah, and work because, together. Yeah, because uh, uh, we have got to have the mindset that I'm not first ward city council person. I am a council person for the city of Flint as a whole, you know. Mm -hmm. So we uh, have got to be, sure, we've got to take care of home, but we've got to be concerned about the entire city. Okay. Um, we are about to wrap it up. We have about a minute left. Is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, I would just like to say that I, uh, the six months that I've been on the council, I worked very, very hard to uh, improve the living conditions. I met some wonderful people that uh, uh, are really working with me, and I would just ask them that the voters will uh, continue to support me. Mm -hmm. And uh, on August 6th, vote to keep Claudia Kroon, First Ward City Council person. All right. Thank you for coming out, Claudia. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll be back in a moment.